What's up, Internet? We are back with our Super 64 Multicart Flash Cart Mabob thingy. Uh, last time we took a look at Charlie's Blast Territory and uh, Command and Conquer and two different types of Clay Fighter. Not the most enthusiastic. Next we're going to do Conquer's Bad Fur Day. A game I think a lot of people really like. Um, and I think it's probably the one miss Rare ever made on the N64, honestly. Although that said, uh, I've never played Mickey's Raceway. But I think that's the only... Um, that's the only rare game I haven't played on the N64. Conker's Bad Fur Day, I think, was a game that is particularly only really memorable because it was like a cutesy looking-ish game on the outset, but it was entirely for adults. And there weren't a lot of games entirely for adults at the time, you know? So this, this was kind of like a big different thing. And, uh, you know, it, it kind of has some interesting history before behind this. Uh, originally, Conker's Bad Fur Day was originally going to be known as Conker's Quest, and it was going to be like this cutesy little platformer. You can see some, like, beta stuff on it, and it actually looked like a pretty cool game. Uh, but apparently people complained too much that it just looked like, you know, Banjo-Kazooie, and it was too cutesy, so apparently Rare got really irate and remade it to be really adult and raunchy and stuff. Um, unfortunately, I don't think it's a particularly good game. I think a lot of it wasn't tested well. I think the platforming is really, really slow and clumsy. Any sort of combat in this game is a bit of a lost cause, and I've, I've just run into so many cases where I've played this game and something is just bugged out. So I, I don't think it was a terribly well bug-tested game. Like, there's, there's this one boss, and anyone who's ever played this game knows this boss because he's probably, like, the most, you know, well-received thing about this game from what I can tell. Uh, when I played that boss, that boss froze. And and the game still ran. The boss just sat around, not really... I can't skip this poop. He, he just sat around um, staring at me, unable to actually be attacked, but not willing to attack me, and I, I just had to take a death. And then when I played that boss a bunch more times, there's like a jump you have to make to get to the boss, and like, half the time I couldn't make that jump, just because like the jump gap was too big and Conquer doesn't jump terribly far. I don't know, like, I, I think this game is remarkable because, you know, it, it was an adult game that looked kind of cutesy, and that was a big deal for the time, like I said. But I don't think people really remember this game for being the most well-made game ever, or certainly, if they do, that wasn't reflective of how I played it. <laughs> I, I remember this being just a, in general, really kind of miserable <laughs> experience, honestly. And, and, you know, I, I went into it with an open mind, just, like, waiting to see a different sort of rare game, and, you know, I, it just wasn't all that fun. Um, this was one of two Conker's games out there, because this did get remade on the Xbox, but there was also a Game Boy Color game, which was its own thing entirely. Um, not super familiar with it, although I did have a magazine, or a, a cheat code book that did, like, a huge spread on on uh, that Game Boy Color game as I talk over the title screen because I mean I'm here to show off gameplay more than anything I, I don't care so much about the plot that's not what this is about uh, but this is rare trying to be like overtly sexy not, like, subtly sexy with their cute writing or, or you know, Candy Kong being kind of slightly flirtatious. Barry's just kind of a sexualized character. Uh, because it's Conker. It, it has to be adult and raunchy, even if it isn't really necessarily the most well-made game ever. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm being too hard on this game, but it's just not my kind of game, I guess. You know, I, I like to credit Rare for making a lot of really good stuff, and I, I like to think they were pretty much on fire on the Super Nintendo and the N64, but I feel like this is just the one miss they had, at least from a game perspective. I, I think it was an interesting cultural touchstone for, you know, the, the people who remember it anyway, but I just don't think it's necessarily the most fun game to play. 
Also, this is exactly why we we're gonna be like trying to do ten minute long videos for N sixty four multi carts instead of like the five minute because plot <laughs> plot I can't skip plot I wish I could skip let me skip it I can't skip it poop. <sighs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our, I don't want to use the term hero, protagonist. But you know, if you don't want to buy an N64 multi-cart to play this, you can always go buy Rare Replay and get 29 other games for 30 bucks. And it's a great deal. And you can play this, like how I played it for the first time. Although I wasn't terribly impressed with it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like I just don't get why people like this game so much. It's one of those things that I think was not necessarily adult in the sense that it was like a mature thought-provoking or interesting thing but really just it, it was the Mortal Kombat level of adult where it was you know it, it was something that wasn't really rated for kids but it was pretty much just entirely immature that's that's how I see Conquer really I don't know I should try and play through this again see if my opinions changed on it but then I'd have to play through this game again, and I'm not sure I want that. Oh, I forgot how long this opening goes. It goes on forever. I'd be less bothered by this if I could skip it, or there was some gameplay. We're gonna have to go for like 20 minutes just to get the to gameplay in this. <laughs> and that's the big problem of the game. He has no table leg. <laughs> uh, I've already run out of things to say about this game, honestly. I feel bad about that, too. Like, I, I'm genuinely trying to think, okay, do I have any other clever anecdotes or anything from when I played this? Not really. I've kind of said everything. Uh, but we might be actually close to some form of gameplay, so that's good, at least. Yes, it is. Alright. Now we have an incredibly hungover conquer. We gotta wander around, and do a thing. We gotta get in there to learn about contextual stuff, because contextual stuff is how this game works. Because that's our jump right now. Although, to be fair, from what I remember, our jump, once we're actually properly playing the game, isn't much better. I don't think anyone can help you, Conquer. I think this game also had like a censorship setting where you could like censor some of it, at least some of the um, swearing and stuff, but I don't think it worked for uh, everything, although again it's been forever since I've actually like properly played through this game. Oh, yeah, another thing I complain about this game is just, you know, it feels like this game kind of loses the plot of what it's about pretty much instantaneously. 
Like, the, the plot is, Conquer, after a long night of drinking, has to get home. That's it. But, very quickly, you know, you end up going into all these different areas where your only motivation is people can pay you if you do random stuff because they ask you to. Like, that, that's kind of what this game ends up being about. You, they they kind of lose focus on what it's actually about, and I've always kind of wondered what this game actually was about at the end of the day, because, you know, it, it never really feels like it has a proper focus. Of course. Okay. Now you do it to another button that's got a different effect. And then you've learned how to use, like, the mechanic of this game, really. <laughs> this is kind of like the, the big gameplay-wise thing, is just doing context-sensitive things to make stuff happen. Not really, no. Uh, how long have I been doing this? <laughs> I find it really weird how much people really, like, rave about this game, and I've just... You know, I, I wanted to play it for the longest time, got a chance to, and it's just like, uh, people like this? Why? It, it feels so unpolished compared to everything else. Uh-oh. Zed down, which would be shoulder buttons for me because I've got a weird controller. Because it's kind of uh, Mario long jump, Banjo-Kazooie backflip sort of rules, basically. Hopefully, but the platforming in this game's a bit a bit crap. <laughs> Alright. Oh. I... My experience, every jump in this game is a bit more of a suggestion than a, a, a definitive rule of how something should work. It could entirely be, though, that the version on Rare Play plays just a little weird. I, a couple of games on that are. Like, I know their version of Jet Force Gemini had to be modified and stuff, although it plays a lot better now. Because they actually added a sensible control scheme to it. That sounds unpleasant. Thought it was about time to move on to a bridge, say. And I'm not moving now. Isn't it a little bit early in the day to start talking about Gothic architecture? No, it's never too early to talk about Gothic architecture. Alright. If I recall, we gotta do that. And that'll open up another thing that lets us do a thing and then, you know. And then once we do all that, I think we'll move on. I don't know, I might have to play through this sometime soon, just to see if I still dislike this game as much as I remember disliking it from having played it a couple years back. Get back here, you silly key. Press B. I can't skip this. Oh, this is intolerable. At least Bandra Kazooie, you could speed up text boxes and stuff. Um, are you sure you got that? Yes, I'm sure I've got it. Press one of the most obvious buttons. Got it. K. 
camera. I'm warning you. Stop being an N64 camera for two seconds, please. Okay. Where did he go? There he is. Oh. Ah. <laughs> it's really hard to hit him with this stupid frying pan. Like, it, it looks a lot bigger than the hitbox actually is for it. Okay, that definitely went through him, but okay. Come on. Uh, we need some Zed targeting. Bop. There we go. All right. I don't think we need that guy again. I think we just need to learn to smack things with a frying pan. I'm pretty sure that was the lesson we need to learn. Hit things with frying pans. It's effective. Like I said, the game doesn't have moments, it's just... It feels like it's just that. It's a couple good moments surrounded by a lot of stuff that doesn't really make a lot of sense. Anyway, I think we kind of get the idea. I don't know. I, I just don't remember that game being any good. Rare miss for Rare on the N64, anyway. Alright. Next we have Cruisin' Exotica. We got a bunch of cruising games to get through. They were all arcade style racing games, from what I recall. Well, let's see what we can do with them. By Midway! I'm actually not super familiar with the cruising games. I remember hearing that they were all kind of like, at best, sort of... I don't... Okay. Uh, clearly I'm gonna be the alien. My name will be Enter Name, that's fine. Let's try Cruising Exotica, that's what we're apparently playing. I guess we're going to Korea. Auto, because manual is for chumps. Use the Mach 4, because I feel like that's a joke. Alright, let's see what we got. Doesn't look too bad. You know, I've seen better looking racing games on the N64. I've seen worse. Oh, okay. Bit easy to get into a slide. I like that you get kind of like a, on the right, a bit of a map to show you where stuff is coming up from behind you. Let's you plan accordingly. Whoa, okay. Did that police car go through all those pylons without hitting a single one? Object permanence? Probably only exist as long as I hit them. Okay, there's a car coming up, so we gotta be careful about that. That radar on the right is gonna be super useful like that. Whoa! Yeah, I'm kinda digging this. Like, I wouldn't say this is like a top tier game by any means, but you know, it seems to be pretty fun. Whoa, that car came out of nowhere. Jump? That's a good jump. I don't know how accurate to the topography of Korea this actually is. I've never been. Woo. Oh, chromed airplane. Just to show off cool chrome effect. 
Also, the checkpoints have a nice chrome effect on them, too. They are just showing off with this game. Alright, let's continue. What was that about Mars? That could be interesting. I've already got a good car. Let's, let's not get rid of a good thing. Okay. I don't like how bunched up we are. Also, we are just straight up underwater. Okay. That's kind of cool. I feel like you should be able to like, go off the paths and like... It looks like the environments are probably a lot wider than they are. But I'm guessing going off the path, it just slows you down immensely. I don't know, I, I played a game on my Sega Saturn recently called... Uh, what's it? Off-Road Interceptor Extreme or something like that. And it felt like a game where you could kind of just go off course because the course wasn't really fully mapped out so much as it had like a million different routes that all led you forward. I feel like this could kind of benefit from that kind of design a little bit, like an open world like that. Also, that's cool. Underwater cave. I'm, I'm liking the wackiness of this. I'm, I'm seeing why they call it Exotica. This game might be cool to have in my collection if it was uh, not super expensive. Whoa, okay. Unfortunately, I looked up a couple of those games we've already played on here, and like that uh, Air Borders game that's Japanese exclusive is really expensive. Uh, that Arrow Gauge uh, racing game, that one's pretty cheap. I think... I, I don't know if it's this one, but I know one of the cruising games is available on the Midway... Um, collections on like the Xbox and PS2. I don't know which one. It might be the third one, which were all racing games, but that was a weird compilation. I, I actually own that, but. All right, and we're here with Cruisin' USA. Um, you might have noticed I jumped a little bit. Uh, when I recorded this last night and I live streamed it, which is uh, extra embarrassing and extra twist to the knife that makes me extra angry. Um, for some reason, all my audio, from the game anyway, turned to really loud static, so that was uh, very, very embarrassing and obnoxious to find out. Uh, so we're re-recording bits of this, so uh, we're back with Cruising USA. Uh, this might be shorter than it was initially going to be, like 10 minutes per, like I like to do, and that's mainly because I've already played these games, I kind of already have a good idea of them. Uh, and the short version is Cruisin' USA is, uh, probably the weakest of the three Cruisin' games, I think. Um, I don't necessarily think it's a bad game, per se. I, I think the Cruisin' games in general are, at best, kind of average. We're gonna grab the vaguely, um, Ferrari-looking car. Um, but I feel like this is just a really bad port. Also, for some reason, Accelerate is now mapped to Z, which... On my controller, that's not too bad, because I've got a weird one where it's got shoulder buttons that are each Z, but uh, if this was a standard N64 controller, it would be where the Z is normally located, and that would be the most obnoxious thing ever. And I'm glancing over at my audio levels to make sure it's not weirdly glitching out on me like it was last night. It was weird. Because, like, it, it was like uh, Streamlabs decided to continue to record, but all the monitored sound was, like, frozen. Like, it wasn't noticing any sort of, like, change in audio levels. It, it was picking up my voice perfectly fine. It was just my recording device wasn't, um, uh, picking up anything other than, like, this weird static effect. It, it was quite odd. And then when I tried to play the video back in playback, it was, like, hyper-sped up for some reason, so... I, I don't know if that's related or whatever, but something weird happened. And I'm worried it might have happened to a few other things I could record, so I'm, like, just before I did this, I'm, I'm looking over everything, <laughs> hoping against hope that, uh, you know, I haven't completely messed up all my records and making a huge embarrassing mess of myself and everything I'm trying to do. Because that would suck, but that would just be so life. <laughs> Not that I'm bitter at all about it. Uh, I, I'm very bitter about it, actually. Um... But anyway, so yeah, this isn't really so much a first impressions because I've already played it. It's an okay game. I think it's the weakest of the three cruising games on the N64. Although I think having all three is a bit redundant. Uh, but this one just has a weird frame rate. Its controls are slightly odd. And it just... The world is not as interesting. Like, you're, you're going through 
like USA, as, as the name implies, whereas, you know, in Cruising World, you're going through the world, in Cruising Exotica, you're going through interesting, weird locations. I, I don't think this is a bad game, I just think it's not a great port, and I don't think it's the most ambitious idea ever. And because we came in second, we get to do it again! And I ran over this lady. And also, that is exactly the joke I made when I did this last night. Continue. Yes. So we're gonna do it again! Yay! So let's do it again. I at least showed off two levels last time. <laughs> Hopefully I can do that here. I'll be sad if I can't. Uh, I, I genuinely don't know what happened. Like, I asked a few people who know a thing or two about my recording device and OBS, and no one seemed to be able to supply any real explanation as to what happened. Oh, I, I should also mention that if the controls look really twitchy, they absolutely are. Like, it, you just kind of nudge the control stick and you get where you need to go, but it's really easy to oversteer. Like, I, I think the controls in this are just a bit too sensitive. But, you know. I think if you're going to get one cruising game on this cartridge, which I think is like the entire cruising library is on here, it's... Uh, Get Exotica. It's it's the most interesting one. And it's, like, the best playing one. Uh, but Cruising USA, it feels kind of like the oldest one. I think it uses the most 2D assets to try and create, like, a faux 3D effect. And it just looks incredibly dated. Whereas I think Exotica and World try and get closer to using, like, actual 3D models a little bit more. Uh, and I'm already running out of stuff to talk about because I've already done this. Let's see what we can do. Can we beat this level and play another level where we'll get our asses kicked promptly? Let's find out. Meow. Turn, 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 turn. We don't have any cars in our direct vicinity, but I think this game rubber bands pretty quickly. And there we go. We get a trophy. Yay. And I really hope these uh, digitized actors got paid a lot, especially that lady who's like right up in front. <laughs> I hope they got paid a lot for this nonsense. I like that it remembers my name from yesterday, but it's making me rewrite it. That's that's not at all annoying. This might shock you, game, but making this your uh, leaderboard and having this long ass animation for it doesn't make it better. All right. Let's play the next level, and this is about as far as I got, if I recall. I beat this level, and that was it. Let's let's do San Francisco. Oh, their frame rate steady on. I don't know how accurate a depiction this is to actual San Francisco. I don't live in the states, and I've only ever been to Los Angeles and Hawaii, so my understanding of actual American topography is a bit off. I'm sure from being, you know, a, a perfect mastery of being able to identify it. Oh. Yeah, okay. Oh, also, because I have to cut all this stuff from yesterday now, uh, you missed when a car just magically spawned on top of me. This game is a bit weird like that. Like I said, I don't think this is necessarily a bad game, I just think it's a bad port. I, I think that's what this game has against it, really, is just, you know, there's probably an arcade version that plays a lot better than this. And like I said, there's uh, a Taito Legends pack that probably has all the cruising games on it. I, I think I have to cut this bit, too, so I, I can continue my anecdote about that for a little bit. You know, there there was a Taito, or Taito, a uh, Midway Arcade Legends pack... Uh, the third one, which was specifically racing games, and of course it, it was a compilation of uh, arcade racing games, which is great. Except, weirdly enough, it was always the console ports of it, which was very just bizarre. Because I feel like that's kind of abandoning immediately your core concept of, you know, it being an arcade compilation. Giving us the less good, uh, you know, console versions of stuff. So, you know, if you get that compilation, you might very well get the N64 versions of stuff. I know um, Hydro Thunder is the Dreamcast version. Which I think actually has advantages, because I think the Dreamcast version of Hydro Thunder had extra stuff. But there, got another 
trophy from this lady who is probably really underpaid, and I hope she's doing well with what little money Midway paid her. Next, we've got uh, Cruisin' World, which is the one in the middle, I think. Not as good as Exotica, but it runs a hell of a lot better than USA. Plus, you're all over the world, which gives you at least a little bit more in terms of variance of tracks. Or at least environments to them. As I'm desperately looking at audio levels to make sure I actually have something. Yes, we are. Okay, good. Do I want to... Uh, no. I probably have one, but I don't care to. Cruise the world! And what car are we going to drive? There's a lot of cars to go with. Let's see, which was the one? Oh yeah, this was the game that lets you drive as a tuk-tuk, so we're absolutely doing that. Because when you're given a tuk-tuk, you have to drive it. And this game sensibly uses the A button. So I think I just popped a wheelie on my tuk-tuk, which is great. Yo, know, there aren't a lot of games that have tuk-tuks in them, and I mean, to be fair, they're basically tricycles with sheds on them. So, yeah, it's probably not the most popular vehicle. But that's why you gotta drive one, you know? They're just bizarre vehicles. Just Cause 2 had them as well. Which is another reason why Just Cause 2 is one of the best games. I love Just Cause 2. But yeah. Controls aren't as touchy. Frame rate's a little bit better. Seems to be using a bit more 3D stuff. That was weird. You know, just in general, I think this is a huge upgrade from USA. I think I still like Exotica better, but... You know, I think this game isn't too bad overall. And that's pretty much everything I know about this game. As I drive into a wall, because again, I'm worried about my audio levels. Ugh. I'm very upset about that still. <laughs> you know, that, that was the sign of, like, everything going wrong for me. <laughs> At, at that moment, because, like, the moment I finished streaming, is like, oh, my stream messed up. And then I, I got up, and was like, well, I'm going to go to bed, and I just got really violently ill, and then my day has just been really crap ever since. So hopefully this doesn't mess up, too, because that would just be today for you. But, you know, it, it's been 24 hours, so now it's officially a new day, which means there's new opportunities for things to go wrong, but I'm going to hope they don't. It'll be a first in my life if they don't, but, you know, here's hoping. Gotta have that hope. Do we get a badly digitized actor? No. No, we don't. Because we came in second. Ugh. Ah. End. But we get to continue. Yeah, that was that was something I remembered. No matter what place you get, for some reason you continue and the game says you came in first. I don't understand what that is. I, I'm thinking about it. The only thing I can think of that would make you in first would be if it um, was just reading the leaderboards and it was just an empty leaderboard. That's the only thing I can think. Because, you know, in the race, I objectively came in second. You know, I should not have come in first, but said I did. These are some weird curves, but, uh, you know, it, it makes the environment slightly more interesting than uh, Cruising USA, which was... It, it felt a little bit more flat and a bit more like just a straight line, you know? And, you know, there were curves in that game, but it still felt like primarily the race courses were straight lines. To me, anyway. And it didn't have, like, the interesting, like, environments of Exotica. But, you know, I, I think, like, Exotica, you know, if you found this game for five bucks or something, it would be pretty decent. But, you know, I think USA is only for, like, the big crews in USA fans. All negative eight of them. I don't know, I, I can't say I've ever met someone who told me outright that they were a big fan of Cruisin' USA when they talk about things they're fondly remembering. I think these are probably just mostly filler games for a collection, but you know, they're they're still kind of decent. Let's not run over that car. Whoop. 
Get in line, yellow car. I'm going to win this race. Boom. Do we get a bad CGI actress giving us a trophy? We do not, but we get a killer guitar riff. That I've got my sound on way too low for me to actually hear properly. All right, that time I absolutely gave, came in first. All right, let's go to Australia. This is a place in the world I'd like to explore, mainly because I actually want to live here. But that's mostly because I live in Canada and I just... Honestly, I just don't ever want to see snow again. <laughs> snow is the worst thing ever. Uh, you know, it's funny. Whenever I talk about Australia to anyone, which it, it comes up every now and then, like, the first thing anyone tells me about Australia is, it's like, you know, it's like the place where all the really, really violent, horribly poisonous spiders are. And then it goes into a thing about how everyone's arachnophobic. And it's like, really? Like, you know, I, I respect you if you're arachnophobic, and I totally get it if you're afraid of, like, super poisonous spiders and stuff, but... I don't know, I live in a basement with spiders as big as my hands, and, you know, I'm not afraid of them. You know? I don't know. I guess I'm just not scared of spiders, which is fine. You know, full respect to people who are. It's just not a thing that bothers me, I guess. But I, I just find it weird that that's always, like, the exact first thing people mention whenever I, I bring up the topic of Australia. It's like, you know, there's, there's a million and one other things you could talk about. I mean, even if you just want to stay on the level of everything's horrible and poisonous there, I mean, platypuses. They're poisonous. They have one foot with barbs on them. That, that makes them super poisonous. What the hell? That was a cool... I'm gonna try that again. I, I I just love that I beat that spinning in midair. Let's retry that race. You know, Tim Tams, Akubras. There's lots of cool stuff in Australia. There's lots of things you could bring up. Not just spiders. Snakes, koalas, and, and their horrible venereal diseases, you know? There's, there's lots of stuff that isn't just spiders. And I think it's a weird thing that everyone just in general focuses on. I don't know. All right. I think the first time I ever really learned anything about Australia, <laughs> and this will probably date me immediately, is um, from the Flash game series Lenny Loose Jocks. That's how I learned about the cane toad problem. <laughs> That's, that's how I learned about uh, the didgeridoo. Uh, go play Lenny Loose Jocks on Flashpoint. Do it, it's good. <laughs> that was one of the first Flash games I ever played, too, was uh, Lenny in Space. That game was really, really quite good. Except that they expect you to keep a code <laughs> while you play, and I wasn't smart enough to realize that. So I got to the end of the game, and there's like a timer, and you have to input a code that's like, oh... Crap, I needed a code? What's the code? I don't have it. And of course, this was on the internet before, you know, the internet was really all that much of a thing, so you can't really just, you know, Google search anything. Because Google didn't exist back then. I don't know. I think that's an interesting introduction to Australia. Can I do that weird spin? Not quite. Oh well. Alright, let's go to the last game, which is Cyber Tiger. Now, I remember this game kind of. I never played it. But it was a game, it's a golf game. It's not about a cybernetic tiger that mauls people to death, although that would probably be better. But it's a game where you get to play as Tiger Woods. But I remember this because I saw a, I think it was a bar, and its big selling point was it had a version of this that was like connected to a giant projector, and you had to like stand in front of it on like this fake green that I'm trying to shape with my hands because you can totally see that, uh, while holding like a fake golf club to take swings at. Uh, I, uh, that was that one bar's claim to fame. Uh, sad claims that you had this. But I remember going into this and playing this last night thinking, ah, you know, it's just a golf game. Why would you want to play this? And, and it, you know, it, it's my same thing I, I said about, um, you know, simulation driving games, which I'll probably have to cut too because static audio that I don't think was recorded. Um, but, you know, I, I don't get simulation, the appeal of simulation racing games because if you're going to do that, why not just, you know, drive a car? It's, it's the most realist simulation you'll ever get. 
You know, I, I get that about sports games, too. It's like, I don't get why you'd want to play a simulated sports game when you could just, you know, play that sports game. Like this, like, you know, I, I could, if I had any fascination with golf, which I don't, you know, I could go out and, uh, you know, just work on my golf game. And it would help my actual golf game overall, so, you know, it would benefit me from some sort of competitive standpoint, if that's what I cared about. I can't skip this. Poop. Um, but what really surprised me when I played this last night, and I, I ended up playing this game for about 20 minutes, was it's actually kind of arcadey. Like, you have the ability to control your ball in midair a little bit. You've got power-ups and stuff. This is actually kind of not bad. If I saw this for cheap, I could see myself maybe getting this. Although I will say the putting game in this is weird. Like, to take a swing, you have to pull back on the stick. And then you have to push it forward, right, as you're ready to go. But, like, for putting, it kind of works like that, but it doesn't detect it as well as, as just taking swings, you know? I don't need a flyby. I did this last night. Um, yeah, for some reason there's a Superman ball. That was absolutely the first thing that, uh, made me realize this wasn't trying to be... Also, there's some kind of rabbit on the field over there. This isn't trying to be, like, 100% actually realistic. But there is, like, a delay when you actually make that swing. Oh. Oh. I'm really bad at golf, by the way. Like, I... I like mini golf, and... Like, mini golfing is fun. I haven't done it in like 15 years because um, the only time I ever got to go to mini golf was uh, when I was a kid, my grandparents and uh, some of my mother's side of the family would take me and uh, some of the other kids in my family uh, out to BC, British Columbia for, for like the Americans and people who aren't in Canada, uh, to this little town called uh, Kelowna, which is right on the lake. And once a year, when we went to, Cl I want to call it Klonoa, <laughs> because I really like those games. But when we went to uh, Kelowna, there was this place called uh, Scandia, which was like one of the few arcades I ever got to. But it was like this huge golf course and had like these amazing like uh, actual like environments and, and set pieces for its golf game. Had this huge arcade with all these really cool machines. It's uh, how I first learned about the Star Wars Trilogy arcade machine. It's how I learned about uh, Initial D was actually through an arcade machine there. Um, I, I played this one really cool game called Cyber Sled there with my uncle, and I, I absolutely want to get a copy of Cyber Sled at some points. It's it's a like every video game nerd. It's it's my goal to get like an arcade at some point. But Cyber Sled's for for nostalgia. It's one of the reasons I want to play it. But uh, uh, I played a, a Mario, like an official Super Mario World, no, a Super Mario Bros. 3, I think, uh, pinball machine there. One of the weirdest uh, experiences I had there was I had run into, and, and bear in mind, like, I, I go to these this, this one place that I don't think is even around anymore. I went there once a year for one night. And bear in mind, this is in a completely different town, in a completely different province, which is the Canadian equivalent of a state, again, for the Americans out there. And on this one night that I happened to be there, I ran into someone I went to school with. <laughs> like, it's just out of nowhere. It was the weirdest thing ever. I just, I turned around while I was playing something. I'm like, oh, hey, you know, what's, what's your name? And he's like, wait, what? <laughs> it was weird. But they had everything there. Scandia was one of the coolest places ever. They had so many cool arcade machines. They had this cool bike machine. They had uh, this huge sit-down um, Afterburner 2 machine. Uh, well, they had like all these stand-up machines. It was very, very cool. They had animatronics for, for all those uh, Five Nights at Freddy's fans out there. That don't include me because I didn't care for those games because I'm not a horror fan. Nor can I deal with jump scares and stuff due to photosensitivity. Um, but, you know, if you wanted a place to take your kids or whatever, or just to go play games or mini golf or whatever, that place was probably the coolest place I've ever been to. It was so good. And I, I'm genuinely sad that, uh, you know, I'm sure they're probably closed now. But I haven't, you know, been there or mini golfed in probably 15 years. Because I'm, I'm an old man who hasn't mini golfed in forever. 
Actually, ironically, my brother just went mini golfing with uh, some of his friends. I didn't even realize there was a mini golf place where he went too. Uh, I I should go mini golfing sometime soon. I I have no interest in actual golf, but uh, mini golf is great. Or uh, golfing, as I like to call it, because I I knew this person who was uh, I, I believe he was Scottish, and he always pronounced golf as golfin. And I, I kind of appropriated that myself because I thought it was funny. So whenever I, I get a chance, I, I like to just call it golfin. Um, the only other golfin game I've played is also actually on the N64. It's uh, the Mario one. I played as Plum on that, and we're going to get to play that at some point as well, I imagine. But uh, I remember playing that and thinking it was pretty good, which is weird because I have no interest in golf, like, at all. The only other uh, golfin games I really like are like the ones that aren't remotely. Wow, that was an overshot. Uh, are are the ones that aren't remotely realistic? Like uh, the Candy Stand Flash mini golfs are are some of the best uh, golf games I've ever played. Um, I, I played the demo to What the Golf. That that game was pretty great. Uh, golf Story is amazing. Uh, that was on my game of the year list last year, I believe. Uh, there's uh, there's some good games, but it's. It's a sport thing, and the only extent of sport things that really interest me is if they don't take themselves seriously and they're more about just having dumb fun than, again, trying to simulate anything. Uh-oh, the game said bad word. It had to censor. All right, let's take one more round of golfing and see where we go. I think I see the... Uh, flag. Whoa. Oh. Uh, ooh. Not good. Bop. Whoopsies. Unfortunately, this game doesn't seem to have, like, alternate camera stuff, as far as I can tell. Like, you can change your power-ups and stuff, and you can change your... But you can't really... Oh, what? Hold on. Hold on, what? I'm, I'm sorry, I need to... We're doing this now. We're learning stuff. Turbo button activate. Good. I need to de-turbo now. All right, there we go. All right, that's perfect. That's that's probably about the size of his actual head, right? All right, so we need to change my clubs, possibly to an open-faced club sandwich. And now you get to see what actual golfing with me is like. Fortunately, we can call a mulligan on this as we watch the amazing replay of our... Oh, that was bad. Mulligan! Oh. Ah. There we go. Nice, with with big head tiger over here. But, uh, you know, I think that was a lot better than, than I expected. Like, when I first played this last night, I was like, ah, oh, it's, it's just going to be a sports game, who cares? But, you know, again, if I saw it for cheap, I, I could see myself picking that up. Anyway, going back to the past five games that I have to remember, we started with Conquer. I don't like this game very much. I know a lot of people really like it. Again, I think that's more of a... Just sort of, it was different for its time, but it wasn't really good. It, it certainly wasn't polished. Cruising Exotica, I think, is the best out of the cruising games. I think having all three is a bit redundant, but if you're going to have the whole collection, you got the whole collection. Exotica is the best out of them. I might actually try and find a copy of that, because that seemed pretty fun. Uh, maybe Cruising World. Don't really care about Cruising USA too much, though. Cyber Tiger. I was actually kind of surprised about this game. Like, yeah, it's it's a sports game, but it's it's trying to have fun with itself. So, you know, I, I think I have to take respect for that. Huge respect for Cyber Tiger. That game was actually, you know, pretty decent for what it was. Certainly a surprise for me. Based on these past five, would I recommend this game? Yeah, I guess. 
Like, again, I'm not the biggest fan of Conquer, but for historical sake and for the fans who want to collect it because it's it's a ridiculously expensive game now, you know, it's there for you. Plus, you got the cruising games if you're the biggest cruising fan ever. And, you know, Cyber Tiger might actually be something worth looking into if you're like me and you want something a little different and not just a straight-on uh, sports thing. But uh, join me next time while we take a look at Dance Dance Revolution on the N64. I didn't even realize there was a DDR game on the N64. Also, I have no dance mat. I have no idea how this is going to work. I also have no rhythm, and I have no sense of, you know, music or anything. So it's going to be the biggest train wreck ever, so look forward to that. But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, uh, follow the stream that this currently is, you know, so you know when we go live instead of having to record a second time. <laughs> whenever we can. Uh, you might also want to check out and subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is where this is going to be shown without static, so hooray for that! And, uh, you know, if you really want to make my day, check out the show's PayPal or Patreon. Support the show any way you can so that I can continue to do what I do to the best of my ability, which in this case is having to re-record, like, everything because recording devices are stupid and be bitter about it. But we got to try out the cruising games, plus you got to see my thoughts on Conquer the Bad for a day, and we got to learn how interesting Cyber Tiger is, and also you get to see how much extra work I go into trying to make the best thing possible. You're welcome. Anyway, I hope to see you again. Peace out, Internet.